about that time again. If you can hear, if you are within an earshot of the sound of my voice, I would love you to join us over here for this next panel. <laughs> I'm good at that. If you can hear me clap once, everybody will do it. <laughs> Serious teacher speak. It's 3.15 and I am so excited to be getting into this conversation because it's another feminine forward one where we are talking about plant medicine and all of its uses. Uh, and this one is using cannabis throughout life's stages. So we've got three women here with us today, all in different stages of their life. And they're going to be talking with us today about um, their experience and knowledge around consuming cannabis to address mental and physical health concerns related to aging specifically. So panelists, they're going to discuss barriers, access, stigmas around using cannabis for uh, different applications and for the aging population. I'm excited to talk about cannabis and its complementary nature to other therapies and how we can use them as we move on through these life cycles. I um, myself just mentioned I hit my half life mark at 45 and introduced some plant-based hormone therapy to my practice. So I'm, a, I'm in this conversation, but today I'll be facilitating. And I'm joined by three women. Can I, can I say the, the, the stages you're in? Am I allowed? Okay. So <laughs> you met Erica earlier, Erica Fortenberry. She's in her 40s. And then we have, I'm going to skip, and then we have Sochi <laughs> Martinez. <laughs> She's in her 60s, right? Yes. And then we have Keiko Beatty in her 70s. And Keiko... We've, we've got some stages to go through, so I'm really looking forward to get into this conversation. But let me just tell you more about everyone because that's important. So Keiko has been a practitioner of Ayurveda, Chinese, and holistic medicine since the 1970s. Her specialty in Bach flower and homeopathic has continued with whole plant cannabis medicine and focusing on education to the community for better patient care, health, and well-being. She is the Director of Education for Coral Cove Wellness Resort in Jamaica, y'all, as well as an owner. This is an all-inclusive cannabis and psychedelic educational resort on the oceanfront of the crystal blue waters of Jamaica. So join me in welcoming Keiko Beatty. And Erica, you've met, and you'll see her throughout the day. She's the Program Director for Club Kindness. We are, she is a cannabis wellness coach and a student pursuing her master's in public health. Erica is a fierce advocate for mental health awareness and is committed to supporting veterans and trauma survivors as they heal their invisible wounds with cannabis. She serves as a community outreach co-chair for This Is Jane Project, and she is also an active member of W Girls, a nonprofit that supports the empowerment of women and children in the LA area. She enjoys traveling, roller skating, reading, and when she's not supporting her local community, you can find her doing yoga on the bluff, soaking up the sun, because we shout out to the sun, in Long Beach. And Erica is also a veteran. She left this off of her bio. I think that's very important to mention today. Thank you. Join me in welcoming Erica yeah. Fordberg. <laughs> we have two veterans on the panel. Sochi is a native Californian with Apache Yukai, yucky and yucky and Mexican roots. As the parent of her 21-year-old daughter, Lorena, she is on the red path as a moccasin maker and cultivator of plant medicine. As a two-spirit elder and the youngest of the Vietnam veterans, she serves the veteran and those in need and those in the need community alongside the group's compassionate veterans led by Ryan Miller and Ray Compass. Another shout out to Nicole Redler today with compassionate cannabis donations. Sochi is involved and attends comrade support and weekly practice of yoga nidra, meditation led by Jayon Leonard. And Sochi is now a full-time, shout out to the sun, sun-grown cannabis cultivator and farmer. Welcome, Sochi Martinez. All right, so let's get into this conversation. Let's jump right into how we use cannabis through life stages and the goals of this, really evaluate the uses, the barriers, the stigmas, and just 
the benefits. Let's talk about the benefits as much as possible. Okay, so it makes sense that middle-life women reported cannabis improves anxiety, mood, sleep. We know this. The drug helps all kinds of symptoms, like dimming, by dimming the prefrontal, uh, prefrontal cortex, the decision-making part of our brain. New studies have shown patterns in cannabis use for women with perimenopause, uh, often years long stretch before periods cease. Along with 127 women who passed through menopause in this study, participants were recruited through online postings on social media sites and online recruitment platform. Nearly all survey respondents were white and most were middle class. So according to how it was reported, 79% of the women surveyed endorsed it to alleviate menopause, the symptoms related to it. Of those, 67%, and I'm a math teacher, so that's a lot. That's more than half. That's like, you know, 79 is like almost a B. So that's a majority. Said cannabis helps with sleep disturbance. And while 46 reported, 46%, that it improved mood and anxiety. Okay, so... I'm going to give you a bunch of boring stats, but you already knew all that, right? So let's talk about from your personal experiences, and this is really for anyone who wants to start, all three of you, from personal experiences, how have you found cannabis able to help you through this current stage of womanhood? So where you are, how has cannabis helped you through this stage of womanhood? Well, um... I don't know that I'm officially in the perimenopause stage. That's but, okay. <laughs> but I do uh, sometimes, uh, or often actually, experience symptoms that feel like perimenopause. I do get hot flashes. I do get night sweats. I do experience... How cute was he? Okay. <laughs> She's so funny, you guys. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I mean, I do experience some of those uh, those symptoms, you know, especially insomnia and anxiety. Um, so cannabis really um, just has become a daily practice because I already know that I, I I'm just at the stage where I'm like. I need to alleviate these symptoms before they ever happen because I just don't have time. I don't have time for them. I, I want to feel good. I want to get good sleep. I don't want to be anxious. I want to be able to sit up here on this stage and speak intelligently about cannabis. And I'm able to do that because I have cannabis. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just become a daily practice. I take a tincture in the morning and I have a joint. I, I, I love joints. That's my method of consumption. And I smoke joints throughout the day. Um, I took a test at seven o'clock this morning and I had a few puffs of my vape. So <laughs> um, it really just has become a companion and just something that I've incorporated into my routine every day to uh, alleviate those symptoms. I love that. Yeah, you know, it's important to establish a routine. Yeah. How have you used cannabis to help you through this stage of your womanhood? Uh, that's a great question. Now, uh, the, the question of menopause is something that I don't quite deal with, being a two-spirit or also known as transgender woman. I'm dependent on hormones. Uh, I have been for over 15 years. And so when I don't use my hormones, if I forget if I'm using a patch or if I'm changing over. Sometimes I inject myself and I can't do it. And I find myself not having that, that hormone level. Uh, I go through all these changes. Hot flashes, depression, sadness. I get teary. Uh, and so, so I come to understand that in this age, I'm about to be 67. I remember watching my grandfather when I was a little kid and he made, he grew his own flower, he's from Mexico, and he made his own salve for pain. He used manteca, which is known as lard. Manteca. <laughs> he used lard to infuse his cannabis. But I watched him do this as a kid, and I, so my first, my first experience with cannabis was medicinally like that, okay? And so I've, I've gone through, but at this stage of my life now, Cannabis is what, uh, it's kind of like a regulator for me. 
Okay, it keeps everything really even. I enjoy it recreationally, but I really do believe in the, the plant medicine aspects of it. So as a cultivator, to me, that is super important. As a native person, we're bringing that plant medicine back around full circle. And so it really does help me with my mood and, and my happiness levels. That's important because, you know, you're managing a rea a sim different symptoms if you, like you said, if you forget to take your hormones or you can't. So now you've got a new symptom or a, a quick onset that you've got to manage. And I, I can say that mood is a, is a big thing for me. It really helps me stabilize my mood. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, as we know, cannabis as a medicine, what a lot of us are utilizing it for is for us to feel good. And I attain that to wellness is balance and we are seeking a balance in our body and the endocannabinoids for what we use is assisting that balance in the body and for myself right now in this moment well the whole female system is the ship has sailed on it's not even in dock and port and partially some of it is because I definitely went through menopause, but I did get cervical uterine cancer, which then metastasized into a ovarian. So I had four tiny little holes here, and they, I had a hysterectomy. But the amazing thing is, is that I never had any um, issues or pain from it afterwards. And, as for hormones, um, I know some people have called me a bitch, and I think that it attributes to that. But was it hormones, or was it just because I wanted something, and I was out of balance? You know what? Sativa is, for me, a medicine that allows me to feel authentic and get my balance back in control. Now, as for the younger years, what I used, it was for maybe different reasons. But always at the end of it, I knew this was a medicine. And it allowed me to be able to take care of myself, love myself, understand myself, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. So for me, cannabis is part of my mental well-being and balance and my spiritual light to my guide of inner peace and harmony. <sighs> I now, used bad okay. words in that. It can't be that relaxing. Okay, so we. This is the goddess that you are today. But you did allude to something that I want to. I want. I think the audience wants to know too. What did those things look? What did that use look like in earlier stages? Because you said maybe, and we know when I was younger, it looked different. How has it changed then? You know, pre-cancer, post-cancer, and the applications. Do you want mean like when it started in the 1970s or just how far back do we want to go? Yeah, <laughs> how, how far back? And he was really cute, but that's okay. Um, I, I'm just making up for pastime because I was married to a gay man. So anyway, that's a whole other thing. But he's a good daddy. Number one, he's a good daddy. He did one thing right. I have a son. Um, so. Where it was in my time, like in my 40s, uh, it was my comfort level. It definitely was my cannabis mommy Jane moment, but I didn't know there were other mommies doing that at that time. But it gave me solace, it gave me peace because I never drank alcohol, never smoked cigarettes. I made it for other ways, but I never had a quailu touch these lips but always it was cannabis that gave me that feeling and I knew it was always with me, com to comfort me. So through my 40s, through my marriage, my divorce, it was all good because I knew I had cannabis and the access was so different than what it is nowadays. I, my Mexican brick was my best friend. Who knew? Who knew? No, you don't put the stems and seeds in, but that's back then. And as it came into the, I was in my 50s and then into my 60s, it all changed. 
I never thought we would be here now with access to medicine like we have available. I am so happy for you. I embrace anybody that wants to come in to utilizing cannabis-based medicine for yourself, for your family, for your children, because we have worked hard to make sure you have access. That is yes. the most important yes. thing. Yes. And then another thing, it's a partner in that, the education. We know, and as a female flower plant, we respect and honor what it has given us and what we can share with others, so. Yes, yes, it's like church. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up the endocannabinoid system because this um, analogy, so to speak, or metaphor of cannabis being like a blanket and really providing solace and making us feel safe, to me, speaks directly to the fact that our cells have a system for receiving it. And it tells us, you know, how cannabinoid deficient or efficient we are when we consume her. And we know based on that anxiety dropping or those levels changing and that feels like that comforting blanket. So we've seen to relieve, you know, hot flashes, sleep problems, low libido. Some menopausal women are choosing to seek relief with cannabis. I am one of those pre-menopausal women seeking relief through cannabis and other plant-based alternatives. It can be a joint, an edible. Um, a study of women, either in perimenopause or postmenopause, sought to gather data about how women use it. Like, what are the methods that really work? And it included over 250 responses. And are you ready? This time, more than 80%. So we're at a solid B now. We're a solid B. 80% of women who had a history of regular cannabis use, they saw that the top three symptoms that were alleviated were sleep problems, mood disturbances, anxiety, and low libido. Okay, so what I want to know are right now, like what are some of the most effective ways? So let's talk about the applications, the products available, how we use it, time of day, when it works best. How do we use cannabis to, to treat those common symptoms? And what does that look like for each of you? Because I've been through a lot. I've been able to use my body as an experiment. I'm, I'm going to write the book. I put it in every hole in my body. Quite seriously, but one thing I found, and I, I want to talk to Dr. Hernandez about it, belly button infusions. Not a lot of people know about that, but a few of you are nodding your, their heads, yes. Because the, if you were to touch your belly button right now, it's okay if you want to, you're gonna find that the skin in there is so much thinner and the absorption rate has the propensity to really get in there. And guess what's in that area? Our reproductive system, our digestive system, our liver, our kidneys. Those are the organs that really can appreciate the endocannabinoids in our body and, and that interaction. So I highly suggest that. But as for all the other holes, great, good use. And I used it definitely Number two, suppositories. Oh, I mean, it, it's usually something that we self do, but if you have a partner that's willing, yes. Because again, it's going right into certain areas where the absorption is very quick onset for many, much easier than even doing edibles. But I love edibles, I love topicals. I'm a professional when it comes to edibles. I'm an edible judge for the Emerald Cup, so. It's a hard job. Somebody's got to do it. I do it for you. Uh, and so every application has usage and meaning because I'll tell you, all our bodies are different as how it absorbs. We're different chemical makeup, different past health history, as well as environment of where you reside and who you reside around all have meaning and effect in absorbing those endocannabinoids and utilizing natural place medicine. You, you know that that is going to be a new YouTube meme. I put it in every hole, right? No, We're that's my book. <laughs> 
Sochi, what about you? What are the, the methods, the applications? Like, how do you really use cannabis for these types of symptoms or otherwise? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I, I have to say that I have a lot of trauma, okay? I have a lot of physical trauma through um, gender transition and surgical procedures and so on. But also, uh, I'm rated 100% PTSD disabled through military PTSD. So uh, there's a tremendous amount of trauma right there. And I was used as a science experiment by the VA with all the different pharmaceuticals. And they just wanted to just keep prescribing, keep prescribing all these drugs. And what they do is they turn us into a zombie. And we decided, I, amongst my other fellow veterans, to not be that. So we use cannabis. And for me personally, uh, smoking cannabis is the most direct method for me to be able to get it into my system for it to work for me. Uh, I do use edibles here and there, but not a whole lot. Uh, I do find that smoking is the most direct. Uh, and what it does is that it has replaced all those pharmaceutical drugs. All of them. I am not an, a science experiment at all, whatsoever, okay? And our, our veteran groups, uh, which we work, you know, we, we have a lot of women in our groups as well. So, uh, and, and our, our, our mission is to get us off of the suicide epidemic and off of the opioid epidemic, and it's working for us. We are highly successful because we donate cannabis. We work with compassionate cannabis use, and that is working tremendously, okay? And so my symptoms may not be menopausal, but, but there's still physical trauma that I've had to, to experience and go through. Thank you, thank you. And you know, you, you're right. This smoking is the quickest onset, right? You smoke it within five to seven minutes, typically you feel it. And so that instant relief is key, especially when you're dealing with acute pain, right? So let's get, it, let's get it done and then let's take the edibles and let's be on the regular CBD to balance our endocannabinoid system. But that acute onset of smoking is key. Yeah. Well, well my daughter, I have a 21 year old daughter and I remember you know, a few years ago, she got, she got hit to having a joint ready for me. So that if she saw me, starting to go through some, ex some experience, a traumatic experience, she would hand that, she would light it for me and hand it to me. And within a minute or two, the symptoms were completely relieved. And so my daughter is now part of the cannabis industry. I'm really proud of that. This is, this is a tear provoking day. There's all kinds of emotions coming up. I'm so grateful for that. And I, and I imagine Erica that while Sochi was speaking, there were some triggers happening for you as well, because I know that your use of cannabis also has a lot to do with treating symptoms of PTSD that were caused by your veteran service in the military. And, but you said something else. I want you to speak to that, but I want you to take us through your ritual because I know you have a ritual. We want to learn to respect the ritual. And number shout out, another shout out to Alchemy29, our supporter of Women Weed Wellness. Um, <laughs> but really though, take us through your, your day because you said well, I'm using it before I have those symptoms so that I can go through that with more ease. So what does that look like for a woman at your stage? Like you said, it, it, it's a daily ritual. Um, when I wake up, I immediately have some water to rehydrate my system. It's very, very important. Um, also because I've, I love coffee. <laughs> so I'm trying to counteract the caffeine. So I have water. I make my coffee. Like I, I love a French press. I go through the whole uh, ritual of making the coffee in a French press. I buy special coffee that I love. Um, and while my coffee is brewing, I roll a joint. I sit down and I grind it up and I roll it, and I go sit outside, I get my sunlight, I have my coffee, and I have my joint, and I just think about how I'm feeling at that moment and uh, think about how I want to feel. Am I feeling how I want to feel? I feel tired, or I feel great today, or I feel motivated, or you know, whatever I'm feeling. So I really just use it uh, as a way to get in tune with my body uh, because of PTSD and depression and anxiety and a myriad of things, I felt disconnected from my body for a long time. 
uh, and within the past few years, just uh, taking that time to allow cannabis to to um, help me feel my emotions, to help me feel the things that are happening in my body. Um, I use that time to connect with myself and, and figure out what I need that day, um, what I need at that moment. In the middle of the day, I could be feeling tired again, I could be feeling anxious, I could be irritable. Um, and if I notice that, it's, it's time to roll up again. I need you to know. be like your daughter for her and have the <laughs> joint ready in the middle of the day. Yes. <laughs> and thankfully, I mean, I, I, live in a, I live with roommates, and my roommates are also cannabis consumers. And sometimes, you know, they come up to me like, hey, do you want to smoke a joint? And I'm like, yeah, well, let's go, you know. And it allows, it allows us to connect with each other. Um, it's allowed me to connect with other people. If I didn't have cannabis, I wouldn't have this person right here, <laughs> um, I wouldn't be here um, because, you know, I, all of my symptoms kept me isolated. They kept me afraid. Um, and cannabis has given me confidence and courage um, to, just to be myself. And so I really, really um, appreciate that. And I try to honor that as much as possible. Um, and, you know, I just try to check in with myself. Um, to make sure that I'm not over consuming, that I'm not mindlessly consuming, that I'm, you know, using uh, my cannabis intentionally to get the, the most benefit out of it. Um, because there are points where you, you're just consuming just because, and I'm like, what, what am I numbing? What am I trying to escape from? Because I don't feel anything anymore. I don't even feel the high anymore because I'm just doing it to escape and not using it uh, with an intention. So that's usually my day, is just setting that intention however, uh, whatever that may look like, um, if I'm trying to study, if I need to rest, if I need to eat, I have ADHD. I can go all day without food, uh, if you can believe it. But <laughs> um, it, it happens often. So cannabis, I, I say this a lot, cannabis is my friend and, and tells me what I need to hear. So cannabis will, cannabis will say, Get something to eat and get something healthy because you haven't had a vegetable in a couple days. Um, drink some water because you're dehydrated. Like, you know, so... You're supposed to eat vegetables every day. Every times day, a day. Every day. Please eat them every day. Don't be like me. But that, but that is the benefit of cannabis. Cannabis helps me get my shit together because it's half the time it's not. Tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. I mean, I love that you said... Cannabis tells me what I need to do. It allows me to check in with myself. That is the ritual, right? Using it in that way to tell you, how do I check in with myself? I, you know, I use cannabis to cool down. Whenever I smoke, my body temperature drops by a couple of degrees. I don't know why, I haven't done enough research on that aspect of it, but I know that that happens in my body. And so if it's real hot, I'm gonna smoke a joint. Like, as soon as we're done with this panel. Um. <laughs> I, Ms. Kanye, yes. I just want to say, yes, one of my favorite ways to infuse is through a joint. And if I'm rolling, they're usually about a gram. So I'm if a girl. If you have not had a Keiko joint. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a girl who likes a nice big fatty. Big fatty. I got another sound bite. A big fatty. Okay. <laughs> the fatter, the better, right? Okay. So I, I want, you know, each of you to, to leave us with, with one thing. And I want you to leave, not just one thing, but I want to give your parting message. I want you to talk to women in each of your age groups who are new to cannabis. So let's assume I'm in my 40s and now I'm ready to try it. What do you say to that consumer? Keiko, I've never tried it. I've always been against it. I'm in my 70s, but now I'm ready to try it. And the same for you, Sochi. What, is you, what, is, what do you want to leave with that group? What do you want them to know? Uh, first of all, to drop the stigma of what cannabis is and to understand that it is a medicine. Okay, and if we, if we can get rid of the stigma and bring it full circle as a medicine uh, is really important and not to be afraid of it. Um, I, I served in the Navy, it was a very, very stressful and we smoked cannabis on the ship. Within an hour of me reporting on board my ship, I was sitting on a pallet of bombs smoking a joint. 
Really? And, yes. Say that and again. And we were not doing that recreationally. It was to relieve our stress because it was a highly stressful. So what I want to say to women my age, well, I'm in my mid-60s, later 60s, is not to be afraid of cannabis and to take your time with it. Discover what works for you. You can start out with a tea. You can, uh, you can eat it. All right? You can make smoothies with the leaf and so on. It doesn't have to be a THC high experience. Okay, because cannabis is very healing. If you're using suppositories with uh, the FICO oil, you're not going to get high from it. Because I, I avoid that kind of a high. It's too much for me. Edibles is, I, I'm very careful with edibles. That's why I prefer to smoke it because I could regulate it much better. So for those of those women that want to experiment with it and they're not into smoking, you could try vaporizing but only start out really slow, really small amounts. That's all it takes. And by, by consuming it through your lungs in that way, uh, you get, you get, a, you get an, 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 almost an immediate effect from it so that you could re regulate it that way. Because if you eat it, it's gonna take a while and then you might think, oh, I'm not feeling it, I'm gonna eat more and then it's gonna be overwhelming And for everybody you. knows that story of the person who ends up in the corner because they didn't wait long enough for the onset and so they had some more. My mom is 85, oh, 86, and uh, I gave her cannabis, different ways to use it and she, she enjoyed some of it, but it affects her dreams. And not in a way that she doesn't dream, it, it gives her weird dreams. So for her, it's not really working in that sense. I'm coming to you in my 70s, never tried it before, I'm ready. What do you tell me, Keiko? Girlfriend, right now, our bodies are changing and our environment is changing. We maybe have an empty nest or maybe we you know, lost our spouse and it's, things are changing and different. And this has been a medicine for thousands of years. It was found in ancient tombs of medicine men back in Asia. And the thing is, is that we had a, a bill that came out in the 1934s that demonized it. That was their purpose because the industry that was against cannabis and hemp decided to come together and demonize it. It not only affected the United States, but it affected the whole world's consciousness on it. But we are now making a movement. We are making headways. And I think you should feel safe in utilizing this because you can utilize it for your arthritis or your, your, and you can have edibles for maybe sleeplessness, anxiety. And the thing is, is that I'm sure your children and your grandchildren will be there to support you and teach you that it, it is okay for you to use cannabis for the first time. I try and go out there and educate like I'm a conservative Asian. It works. <laughs> because, you know, there was that one movie that says nobody pays attention to the Asian tourist. It's true. So are they going to pay attention to somebody talking about cannabis that's coming from a conservative background? They could be more open to it. And I'm sure I try and provide a safe place to honor those who are just beginning on this journey of understanding natural plant-based medicine. Yes. Yes. Remember when I said representation? Yes. You have to see. Okay, so I'm an 80s baby, and listen, Reagan told me drugs were bad. And so I have thought drugs were bad my whole childhood, but now I'm 41, and I don't believe all that. What should I do, Erica? <laughs> well, the first thing, we ain't listening to Reagan, okay? <laughs> That's the first thing. Second, um, my my advice is always, you know, you know, like Sochi said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to at least just open your mind to the possibility um, and ask some questions, do some research. Um, 
when people usually ask me about certain things, before I even get to suggesting products or anything like that, um, I recommend mindfulness. Take the time to figure out what your body needs. That is what we should be doing at this point stage in our lives because our needs are changing at 40 years old 45 years old your body is absolutely changing and going through a lot of different processes um at literally the day after i turned 40 she knows because i told her i woke up and i said what is this i where, said welcome to the 40s so wh- where did this pain come from where did this ache come from now my i can't see like it's just so, so many different things. So I always suggest just take some time to figure out what your body is going through and what you need. Get a journal. Write it down. At 8 a.m., I woke up and my back was hurting. At 12 p.m., I felt super sleepy or super hungry or I didn't feel hungry at all. So just take note of those things. And once you get down to that, you can see, okay, I really need something that's going to boost my focus at 3 p.m. Or I need something that's going to stimulate my appetite. Or I need something that's going to help me sleep because I cannot sleep. Because these are the questions that you should ask when you go into the dispensary to get your products. Because if you just go in and you say, I want the gas, I want to get high, they're just going to give you some overpriced uh, weed that's probably very medio- uh, mediocre and uh, you know grown very cheaply. So take the time to, to figure out your body and what it needs and then go into your research because there are many, many different products out there for all different types of symptoms, uh, different types of applications. That's the number one thing I tell people. If you don't want to smoke, you don't ever have to smoke. You don't ever have to inhale the cannabis if you don't want to. The best way to get it in your body is ingestion anyway. Um, you know, and I, I use it all the ways. I in s- all the holes. All the, all the way. I have suppositories. I have topicals. I have transdermal patches. I have tinctures. I have vapes. I have wax and shatter and butt. I have all the stuff. So <laughs> they're, they're, however you want to use it or think you want to use it, it's out there for you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Ashe. And someone just told me about some CBD eye drops that I need to try. We need to talk about that first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. everybody's like, eye drops. Oh, yeah, we need to talk about that. So listen, using cannabis through life stages, it doesn't just start at 40s, but I love that because a lot of things happen in the 40s. It's true. And it, in this room, y'all can, yes, yes, yes. Things start to change. And so I love that you said, I'm not even going to get into recommending products. I'm going to start with mindfulness. What are you trying to treat? How are you feeling right now? What do you need it for? That's next level because then we can dive into what are the applications that make the most sense. So this has been a beautiful discussion. I want to thank you. Just the last thing I want you all to do very quickly is just tell people where to find you. And if I have any questions in the audience, we can take them now as well. So please put your hand up if you do. But really quickly, just tell people how to find you. Um, You can find me on Instagram uh, under... Home girl moccasins. So I'm a moccasin maker. So also there's one page called Sochi Home Girl Moccasins. So you'll find me there um, on Instagram, uh, as well as through Compassionate Veteran Work and Operation Evac that we do. First of all, I just want to say what an honor it is to be here. But I really, truly honor each and every one of you that is taking your time to sit here with us because every person up here is coming from their heart space to share with you as we honor you and your quest for your knowledge in this cannabis industry and community. But I am so honored to be here on the stage with two veterans who have given their time and support to our country. So I really thank you so much. And to a brilliant, brilliant Club Kindness and Miss Kindness and Erica for what they've created here. So thank you so much. Yes. Um, You can find me at Keiko at Coral Cove Wellness.com is my uh, email address for Coral Cove 
If you want to learn more about Coral Cove and our mission of being able to support people with cannabis and fungi medicine, all for wellness, it's an honor, honor so much to be here and share this time with you. So thank you so much for letting me be here with you. It's, it's a real treasure. And I always hope to see us all in the future being able to infuse however you want to do it, topicals, edibles, or a big fatty. Thank you. Yes, um, I would also like to express my gratitude. Um, this is my first time speaking publicly about <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> Um, I tell people a lot that I manifested this. Um, I literally did because before I met Miss Kindness, I told myself that I w and the universe that I wanted to uh, speak publicly about cannabis consumption and to really educate people. So I'm so happy to be here. All my little stoner dreams are coming true. Uh, <laughs> but you can find me um, on Instagram. I'm, I'm, some people think I'm an influencer. I'm not. I post very, very sporadically. Um, I prefer to talk to people um, like this or one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I do have an Instagram page. It's Erica with two Ks. So you see E-R-I-K-K-A-W-I-T-H-2-K-Z. That's my Instagram. You can find me there. Um, you can DM me. If you prefer email, you can email me at Erica at clubkindness.io. Uh, if you have any questions or if you'd like to book uh, an elevated community session and learn more about cannabis. Thank you. <laughs> I see a question. I can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about that. <laughs> I'll start, and then y'all can get into it, because I love me some lube, okay? I've been married 15 years. There's a reason. So no, <laughs> I will say that I mentioned early in the talk that I, you know, I'm 45, and I just started plant-based hormone therapy, and it's for some of these reasons. I just started to experience, like, why are the sheets soaked at night? I was having incredible night sweats, and my husband was like, we got to change the sheets again. What's going on? And my eczema was out of control, out of control. And I have eczema, but it was, like, out of control. And then, yeah, sex began to become a little bit more painful. I was taking longer to, to naturally lube up. And so to answer your question directly... For me, it is um, a part of the, the foreplay. I, I get to involve my partner in helping my body feel better. And of course, he likes it. And it's like a fun game. And we kind of wait for it to kick in together. And some lubes, depending on you know vaginal application or even um, anal application of lubes, they have different cannabinoids in them that even your partner can benefit from. So once they enter they, one of those holes, they, <laughs> they too get to experience the medicine topically. And so it's really, physically it relieves the symptoms immediately because that's what the cannabis does for the body. But I like to believe that also the connecting process started to already get me warmed up before we even got to the lube. And so much like how you said cannabis tells my body what I need, using it in that process makes it a much more spiritual connecting. And so then there's just like drips everywhere after that. Um, come down, lay right here, and we'll show you. No. <laughs> what kind of show is this? Yeah. Uh, the th it, it, every, it's true, it's the intentions. And you know as you're, and this is again, that self-experimentation. Go ahead, buy them all, try them all. And because your moods are different and his are different and the stimulation, do you know the tip of the penis has like over, what, 1,200,000 mm -hmm. receptors? Whoa, talk about giving head. I mean, that's just it. It has the propensity to really be stimulated. I, but that's where you can maybe do an application on him. And, of course, 
he should be in touch with you, your special G-spots of pleasure, right? So that communication you have with your partner is so important and being able to utilize products that are going to match with both of your body types. So thank you for asking that question, Kelly, because you know that is one of the symptoms that it's a significant symptom that comes with aging and, and there's a lot of fear around like, you know, some women at that stage haven't really even like touched themselves down there and really had to be personal with their bodies in that way. And so cannabis, cannabis can, you know, maybe you smoke a joint first and so it relaxes your mind enough to touch yourself down there. And so there's just like all kinds of ways you can use it to help with that. I really appreciate you bringing up that specific symptom. Can I? Can Any I say, other questions? Oh yeah, of course, Sochi. Oh, I, I just wanted to say a little bit about that as well is that um, using a, a topical lube, cannabis lube, has been great for me because I'm discovering my body in a new way. Even though I, I, I've had this body for years now, um, but I'm discovering myself and having these products really, really work because it allows me to spend the time with myself getting to know my body. And um, I could say most people have not experienced orgasm in both sexes. And, and I've gotten to do that. And I gotta tell you, it's an amazing okay. experience. Okay? And, and so the cannabis um, lubes for that are amazing. And it sent me into places I had no idea existed. And it's made me appreciate my body so much more and what I've been gifted. To me, it's a gift. That really excited me, thinking of, you know, I thought, how can I achieve that? I thought the same thing. <laughs> I'm in for advent. No, I don't think I want to adventure that. But I organized them in two different Awesome. Listen, yes, yes. And um, if, you, if you stop on by the Women Weed Wellness booth, um, Chia. That's right. Chia has, she makes a THC loo. So if booth you're looking three, our can of flowers. to try that, you should go ask her. You should talk about that. You should talk about that with her. Yeah, you I should love do that. it. Well, I'm just going to say thank you again to you three lovely women. I really appreciate you taking this afternoon to sit here with me, your thoughtful responses, just being here on this platform for sharing your voice, not only here, but everywhere else I know you all share it. And for the wonderful sound bites I got today, <laughs> for the intention, the thoughtfulness, the honor, the, the intelligence, all of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.